Guys, if you're a fan of the Sly Guy podcast and you want to get a little bit more from this product, <laughs> you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy podcast where you get a bonus weekly podcast, you get the extra Sly Guy podcast, you get Dog Walks with Davey, you get the Serial Killing a podcast, you get the Champions League of Weird, you get my last stand up special Pillow Talk, and lots more. You get early access to tickets, you get occasional wee silly things as well nudes you know it sort of doubles up it's like an only fans as well but if you want to support the podcast um and we're nearly moving we're nearly going to new space so we're going to up the production we're going to up the rest it's going to be a lot of fun and it's all for patreon so head on there www.patreon.com forward slash sly guy podcast guys i'm back in the ulster hall on the 10th of september with my brand new show bits and pieces now i want to come out not as you would imagine, but um, just on this forum and say that this will be my last big show for a while. So I'm not planning to do another Ulster Hall next year. I'm not planning to do anywhere bigger next year. I'm not planning on anything, really. This is going to be it. So once this is out of the way, you mightn't get to catch me doing that for quite a while. So... Um, it's probably a bit drastic sounding. Not, I'm not ill or anything, but I just I'm going to take a break from it because, you know, plugging the shows, promoting all the time it gets a bit boring. You know, so I'm going to take a break and try some other stuff, and then come back maybe a year, two years, I'll do another big show. So if you want to come and see me in a big venue, come to the Ulster Hall this year, the 10th of September. It's a Saturday. It's going to be my best show to date. I can't wait for it. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. And hopefully you will come. So get tickets via the link in the bio. I'll see you there. Guys, this week has been a trying week. Um, I've two gigs. This, If you're listening to this on Thursday, you'll, you'll get both. If you're listening on Friday, you'll only get one. If you're listening after that, you'll get none. But on Thursday night, the 28th of July, we were to be doing a gig in the Boneyard in Belfast and Tim McGarry was the headline. I was going to be there, Rory Woods is going to be there. Unfortunately, Tim is not able to do the gig. Um, some Something's come up, he's unable to do the gig. That will also affect the gig that he's supposed to do with me on Friday, the 29th of July at the Strand Art Centre. Now, as much as that's a shame and we will miss Tim, we've got good replacements. So instead of Tim on the Thursday, Colin Geddes is going to headline at the Boneyard. The Boneyard is always a fun time. You'll enjoy it. Get yourself there. Come see the show. It'll be a laugh. And then on Friday at the Strand Art Centre, Shane Todd's going to be filling in for Tim McGarry. So it's again, it's going to be an equally as enjoyable night on both nights. Just unfortunately without Tim, but he will be. He'll be back. I was going to say, say a prayer for him, light a candle, just wish him well, and he'll be back and he'll be able to do those shows in the future. But that's just where it's at. And you can get links to those too by the link in the bio. The Sly Guy podcast is brought to you in association with Modest Beer. We all know Modest by now. They're an independent brewery. It started here in Hollywood. Now they've expanded. They're going bigger, beyonder, and further and beyonder. If you want to know more about them, give them a follow on social media at Modest Beer. That's on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Or if you want to get some merch, or just check out what Modest are all about, get a mission statement, you know, find out the different types of beer they've got, go to their classic website, which is www.modestbeer.co.uk. I don't know why it's classic. I mean, classic, as in it's their, the, the classic way to go check these things is via a website. Now it's all social media, but their website's also classic. So if you want to get some beer and some merch, www.mossbeer.co.uk forward slash Davy sent you. That's not, that'll just go to nowhere, but you know what I mean? Enjoy the podcast. I'm the Sly Guy. Guys, welcome to the Sly Guy podcast. With me, your more tan than usual host, Dave Elliott. Yes, I'm back from the holidays. I'm feeling good. I'm glad to be back in the studio doing the podcast. And. You know, I'm I'm feeling well. I'm I'm I would say I'm well rested. I'm not I'm not well rested at all. If anything, I'm I'm more tired. I'm more tired and more need of an actual rest than I was before when I went on holidays. Put it like that. Figure that out. Um, if you don't have kids, don't. If you do have kids and you've been on holidays with said kids, you should know what I'm talking about. I went away to 
I mean, just, I don't know, Buckinghamshire, I guess it's called. It's the area. We were staying in a place called Maidenhead. Very nice down by the Thames. Beautiful times. Lots to do, lots to see. But, I mean, if you go on holidays with kids, especially kids under the age of five, and one of them's probably bad enough, two of them, a struggle, in the middle of a heat wave, you know, it's not exactly going to be a walk in the park. So I am tired. There was lots of activities to do on the trip. It was a, it was a jam-packed trip full of activities to keep the kids happy. Now, as I said before, I hate the phrase holiday when you're talking about going with young kids. You essentially, or what you're doing is just you're you're living your life with your kids in another place that is too hot and you spent too much money on, which is not being appreciated by the kids and you just get stressed and sweaty. You're just, you're just stressed and sweaty in another place with your kids being un- unappreciative and then when you get home, you're more exhausted than you've ever been in your life and you just want to go on another holiday and when you say another holiday, you want to go without the kids. You want to leave your kids with the grandparents and you and your wife or whoever. You know, on occasion, I, w- I you know, if someone said to me, listen, we'll offer you a holiday, Dave. If Thomas Cook got in touch, if Mr. Cook rang me and was like, listen, Dave, Davey, it's Thomas here. I'm like, Thomas, Thomas cook me. He's like, oh, Thomas, cook the, the holiday agent. Is that a phrase? I don't know. Um, and then he said, estate agent. No, that's not true. No, mate. It's Thomas, Thomas cook the holiday agent. I'm like, all right, okay. Tell you what it is, mate. I've got a wee deal for you. It's very secret. And I say, okay, well, what's the deal? You can go on holiday to Lanzarote for a week. Okay, that sounds good. Can't bring your missus. I'd be tempted. You know, I would be very tempted to just go, yeah, okay, I'll go. I'll go because she can be a melter as well. As much as I love her, yes, sometimes it's nice to just get peace, you know, and I think after that holiday, we'll look back on it. Like, like, again, parents you'll be with me on this one, you will look back on the photos and you will go, oh, we had a nice time. We had a really nice time, but also exhausted. Now, we drove there as well, so it was basically the south of England. We drove, we got a boat, the stand line, from Belfast to Birkenhead, which is like just outside of Liverpool and the other side of, of Liverpool. I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's a general facility. Facility, you can help see that my mind's gone. It's a general vicinity it's also a facility too because the people of Birkenhead look like they should be kept in a facility it wasn't a nice place Birkenhead okay so we went there the boat took 45 hours to get there it took the stand line as long to get from Belfast to Birkenhead as it did to take the Titanic to get from Belfast to Iceberg you know it took that same length length of time but we slept there we got on the boat put the kids in their PJs put them to bed to be fair, had a good night's sleep, got up six in the morning and just went on their holidays and it was a good time. And on the way down, again, when you have young kids, you can't just go you can't just go straight on a journey of about five hours with kids. You need to break it up. And again, I'm the dad of the family, so I just carry stuff. I just carry my role in the family is to carry bags and if any burglars break into the house I get murdered first. That's the rule of a dad. You lift things and you, you're a human shield. And that's that's literally the rule of a dad. If you're a mum, you, now this could be offend some mothers. Some mothers might be like, mm, excuse me. But if you're a mother, you like the plan. Now, some people would say mums like the plan. Other people would say like to, to have total and utter control over every single facet of everything. I mean, it's each to their own. Now, at the start of the holiday, my wife was like, this is what I would like to do, and had a full itinerary. Now, for a long time, I was of the impression she liked to be a control freak, bossy boots, whatever you want to call it. She liked to make her own plans. Now, how I got to this this conclusion, um, it was it, it was very, you know, I got to, uh, there was different ways that got me to, to where... Um, I, I, I got this conclusion one of the things is that you know I would suggest things but what about we do this and she would go nah 
nasty and shit or any, you know anything I would just be nah not for me so she's like listen I'll do that she gets out a file of facts gets out a, a planner gets out a map gets an old school route map and my kid just use google maps she plans everything she's like and then you could stop here in this route that's grand so on the way down we stopped at a farm called Am- in Amerton somewhere near Birmingham I want to say stopped there the day was hot as all fuck now I've been to hot places in the world I'm trying to think of the hottest places I've been to South Africa was very hot. Lanzarote's hot. LA's hot. Florida, very hot. Um, where else have I been? It's been very hot. Africa. France, very hot. Spain, hot. Tenerife, hot. But I was, I was somewhere really hot that wasn't South Africa. Can't remember. That's near here and there. It's shy content, right? I've been to hot places. But this farm outside Birmingham might have been the hottest place I've ever been in my whole damn life. It truly was hot as all shit. And we were there with the kids factor 50 up, I was factor 50 up, bald head was factor 50 up, my wife was factor 50 up. And it was just too hot to be doing anything. So all we really did, we went there, looked at a few animals, um, played with some farm based toys, ate some ice creams, got in the car, headed on their next journey. Now, this is where, again, as a dad, I stepped out of my comfort zone here. I made a suggestion, and normally you get put down with a suggestion. But I, we drove past the sign, and I just liked the cadence of the said sign. I liked the phrasing and the wording, historic Warwick. I liked the way it rhymed. I liked the way, hey, this is pretty cool. Saw that, I said, let's go to Warwick. Let's see what Warwick's all about. Now I know there's a castle in Warwick went to Warwick Castle and my wife was like oh my god are you serious you're suggesting something and I was like well I do suggest things I regularly suggest things but normally what happens I suggest things and you just go no so this occasion she likes if there's two things my wife likes one is organising things and the other is castles so although it deviated slightly from her very structured plan we went to see a castle that worked now this castle Warwick Castle for anyone that doesn't know it's in Warwick for anyone that doesn't know where Warwick is I don't know where Warwick is too I imagine it's similar just somewhere near ish to London because it's near where Shakespeare was born which is Stratford upon Avon and Shakespeare was born at a time where there was no cars or buses or trains so we couldn't have just like got a train from Stratford upon Avon to London because he worked in London you know what I mean so he would probably have to have gone on a horse or had a mate carry him or just walked himself so I'm going to say it's not too far from London now what I could do with a computer in front of me right here is check which maybe for the sake of the podcast I will have a look I will see Warwick um, I mean obviously I've looked up Warwick Castle Warwick um, distance from London Let's see if I'm right or wrong. I made a fool of myself. Oh shit, London Warwick's just outside Birmingham. So big shout out to um, my main man, Shakespeare, for walking that that distance, which is a two hour journey in a car. So let's see how far Stratford upon Avon is from London because uh, Stratford upon Avon to London. Oh yeah, a boy Shakespeare, two and a half hours in the car. So Lord knows how long it took him to walk, but fair play to him for heading to London and opening the Globe Theatre and all. Maybe a horse took him on a carriage, I don't know. Fuck Shakespeare, he's dead anyway, he's not going to listen to this. But anyway, we dropped into Warwick Castle, which was just a huge, big castle, and the kids didn't hate it. There's a character called Zog, who's written, I want to say, Jul- by Julia Donaldson. That could be entirely wrong, and I could have made an absolute fool of myself, but I'm going to back myself, because I think she wrote The Gruffalo, Um and this guy Zog is a flying dragon and he's got doctors and stuff yes and it's Julia Donaldson did I say Victoria Donaldson I don't know I meant Julia but she came up with a Gruffalo and she came up with Zog and all that stuff and basically Warwick Castle has a Zog in it Zog's a dragon the kids loved it victory had a pub so I got a, some, some cider on board that helped me also by doing that meant didn't have to drive the rest of the journey so victory to me um, not that I drove anyway because my wife likes to have full control and I like to sleep so um, that worked so we were there for a bit kids saw Zog had a cold beer sweated profusely which I mean I don't really mind because I sweat in cold 
so it's nice to be super hot so everyone's sweating so I don't feel like such a grotesque out of um, shape beast and it was nice to see that so we went there eventually made it down to where we were going to get to and we were uh, staying in Catherine's aunt's house which was absolutely beautiful you know really really nice house really nice part of the world the only criticism I have of the whole thing the heat now I know it's not Catherine's aunt's fault she could have hired the, she could have bought a couple of mandoliers now for anyone that has listened to the past the Boy Town podcast will know what a mandolier is a mandolier is a chandelier made up of just two circles held together by nude nude muscular men it's a chandelier of men right and she should have bought two mandoliers which would have say eight men on each eight, eight muscular men they would come off eight, they had a fans 16 fans just fanning us that would have been ideal wasn't to be but it was a really nice time so we were there for the week it was good I had to come home during um, the week for a work based activity and I could have just said doing a gig it wasn't a gig it was doing something else but you know that was fun fun and games uh, before before I went home Catherine got sick for the day and I'd look after the two kids by myself and I truly mean this when I say I love my kids with all my heart I love both the kids with all my heart but if anything should ever happen to Catherine whereby like she dies now if we divorced that's fine she can have them for a few days a week that's probably best case scenario because it's split up you know what I mean and that you don't have the kids all ta- all day every day but you know would I sacrifice my, my love for her to get a rest from the kids yes probably but um she was not well and I'd look after the two kids and by God in that heat it was in a nightmare that day I was like I don't know what to do because again she's the main planner and when the main planner's down the, the, the wing guy again as I said before a dad just carries things that's the sole purpose of a dad to, get, to carry things and get murdered by burglars and with no planning on the agenda I had to use Google to look for things to do like I had to get it out and look for things to do and I just looked for a local national trust now if you're a long time listener to the podcast you'll know I'm a national trust guy if you're a real long time listener to the podcast you'll know there's been some beef for the national trust you will know that they have disrespected me and they have told me to stop putting stuff out on my Instagram tagging myself as an influencer and hashtag national trust influencer because they have said there's no official affiliation between myself and the national trust now I'm actually tempted to go in and actually read exactly how they worded that because it is um, disrespectful. Let me just see National Trust. Um, oh no, I might have been sassy and unfold them. National Trust NI. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. National. This is back in January 2020. There's going to be some history lessons here. But again, this is National Trust NI, so it's different to here, you know, or to England, so might be okay. Um, Hi Dave, thanks for tagging us in your content at the weekend. We hope you enjoyed your visit to the Argery. You mentioned in your content that you're a brand ambassador for the National Trust NI and had tickets to give away, but we don't have any such official partnership set up. Have you ever liaised directly with any of our team on this? And I said, hey, National Trust, I noticed you didn't have a yet after your line. We don't have any such official partnership set up, but I'll let that go. The whole brand ambassador thing is tongue-in-cheek, and I'm sure my followers will recognise this. The person who won free tickets was a fellow comedian, and I knew this wasn't real. That being said, National Trust has a lot of respect in my heart. I love you guys, and I hope you love me back. We enjoy spending time there with yourselves. Right? She thinks nice. And they said, hey, Dave, it's fantastic to hear you're a big fan of ours. We totally understand the tongue-in-cheek approach, but we would prefer it if you didn't call yourself a brand ambassador. Just in case people think it's an officially endorsed partnership. Delighted for you to continue creating great content and tagging us. Enjoy exploring. And I said, you've cut me in my core there, National Trust. I know when I'm not wanted. Crawfordsburg Country Park it is this weekend. 
So that was how it was left. Now, I still have respect for the National Trust. I haven't tagged any National Trust in England to try to become a brand ambassador with them. I don't know if those guys want um, to see. So, you know, I feel like maybe that's my next move. Maybe go to England, maybe relocate to England, become a National Trust brand ambassador and see where it goes. Now, again, they'll probably be like, actually, we don't want you to be an ambassador for the National Trust because, you know, you're you a certain look about you and you're like, what's that mean? You're kind of, you know, you're, you're sort of like, a, you know, an overweight guy because, hey, it may or may not have been the case that I didn't get work with a particular company because I was fat recently. That's true. We'll not talk about that because they'd be cross me and it's another company I would like to be a brand ambassador for, but I'll not talk about it. You can figure it out. If you think right. Whatever that means. You can tell I'm tired, can't you? So anyway, nice holiday. Nice time. Apart from the last day, we're getting ready to... Or the day before the last day, we were getting ready to go home. We didn't want to... Now, this is the thing. We'd done a lot of driving. We went to Peppa Pig World, which was a good time. I went on some roller coasters, which terrified me because I'm too big for roller coasters. We went... The first thing we went on was like this flume thing, like a... A water-based fucking roller coaster. Wow, my brain is so dead. Get this, I guess, guys. I'm sorry, but we were going down this thing. We brought Holly on that first. The four, my four-year-old, she was traumatized. Wouldn't go on any other rides the rest of the time. Once we got the Peppa Pig World, refused to go on anything. Had to grab her, had to pull her onto these rides like it was some kind of fucking kidnapper and she didn't like it cried a lot that was fun w got to meet peppa pig got in the queue the guy was like sorry mate no more room to meet peppa pig cried again heartbroken and that was the day before the last day of the holiday and then the next day we were supposed to go and see my sister who lived in st albans but we just couldn't do it kids were just too tired you know the night before they were up to like 11 o'clock which is mental for a four-year-old one-year-old but we'd gone to visit my aunt instead of Catherine's aunt who we had swapped houses with we'd gone to see my aunt who lived not too far away had a great time you know with nice barbecue a few drinks kids had a lot of fun they were playing and stuff and it was just a nice time and then on the way home the only reason i went on holiday we got to stop at chester zoo now people may or may not remember this ongoing saga over the last number of years if you're a new listener to the podcast sorry that this is the week you decided to be a new a new listener to the podcast because this week's episode has been fucking shit. But oh, hold on a second. Um, this is a long running story with Chester Zoo. Let me just Google Chester Zoo. Oh no, I have just done the most me thing ever. I have just replied to an email saying Chester Zoo. So right, Chester Zoo, right. Basically, long story short, many years ago, this this is when I got an email back from Chester Zoo. It was on the 31st. No, no, this is before that. So thank you, there you go. This is on the 25th of November, 2017. So at this point, I had no kids. <laughs> was married, just me. Was going out with Catherine, like, but whatever just me i was actually about to have a kid because oh, holly was born early december that year but i sent a message to chester zoo on their official website having watched the show called the secret life of the zoo right basically in it there was these two red pandas one of them was called nema the other one was called june Nima and June. Nima, woman, June, dude, right? So, long story short, the, the breeders were in, the, the zookeepers were in with these two red pandas, and they were just, you know, feeding them and stuff, and petting them or brushing them or stroking them. I know, fuck you, do keep red pandas. But Nima was eating all June's food, and June was like, nah, you do that. Now, maybe just Nima likes to be an organised, control freak woman, kind of like my wife, and then June was just kind of, 
you know, forced to just not eat. Now, obviously, I do eat, like, whatever, but, yeah, it was a bit of a worry, and they're like, nah, something wrong with you, and they took him weight, him. he was losing weight over a couple of days, he was losing weight, not eating, they were stressing. They brought him in to see a doctor, and they're like, oh, no, June's terminally ill, June's going to die, you have to put him down. And I don't know whether it was the fact that I was just about to become a dad or something myself, or what it was, but for some reason, I got really upset, to the point that I thought to myself, I need to get in touch with Chester Zoo to check on the well-being of Nima, who's just lost her partner. So I messaged them along the lines of, hey guys, hope Nima's doing all right. So sad to hear what happened to Chung. Only love, RIP, Dave. You know, sorry for the loss of Chung, whatever. Got a reply from Chester Zoo on the 25th of November 2017 saying Dave thank you for taking time to contact Chester Zoo it's always great to hear what you have to say now that's insincere because it's not always great to hear what I have to say it's great to hear that you're a fan of the secret life of the zoo and you're enjoying watching it now that's not that's not a tone that you should be adopting with a 30 year old guy at the time you know that's just the tone you would adopt with maybe a 12 year old with a brain injury you know that's definitely that sort of tone it's great to hear you're a fan of Secret Life of the Zoo and you're enjoying watching it our animal keepers work closely with all the animals and the loss of June had hit the team hard I've spoken with our animal team and we can confirm that Nima is fine and she is eating well and enjoying the normal daily routine now I did specifically ask if Nemo was eating well following the death of June because I thought that might have, that's what impacted him. He wasn't eating well, so I'm just making sure, listen, is Nima eating well? Thank God she's eating well. There are no plans at the minute to add another red panda to the collection because I kind of said, listen, I wouldn't be too comfortable with you replacing June yet. Let Nima grieve. Let her grieve. It is what it is. Thank you for your interest and vital support of Chester Zoo. I hope you enjoy watching the rest of the series. Best wishes, Kerry. Guest services team. Now, that's fine. Says at the top of my email here, you replied to this on the 31st of August, 2019. So almost two years later, I replied to Chester Zoo. Um, and what did I say? I'm here, you're asking? Well, I'll tell you. Hi, guys. I messaged yourselves a couple of years ago having been really upset during an episode of Secret Life of the Zoo. In the episode, Jung, a red panda had to be put to sleep, which was really heartbreaking. In the episode, Jung's death was looked to, to have taken a real toll on his partner Nima's well-being, which prompted my message as I was so concerned for her and hoped for the reassurance that she was okay. You were very kind in letting me know she was doing as best as she could in the circumstances and was eating well, etc. Now, two years later, I've just seen an article that Nima has had twins with her new beau, Coda. Fucking son of a bitch. This truly is a great news story, and I am delighted that Nima has been able to flourish and have had twins with Coda. I'm sure Jung is up there in Red Panda Heaven as proud as Punch. What are the names of the twins, and have you any up to date pictures? <laughs> this story made my day, and I hope to one day make it to Chester Zoo to see Nima and the twins. All the best. Dave. Now, you'd assume they wouldn't continue the email chain. Carrie's been away for a couple of years. Maybe there's work turnover. Maybe she's not responding. Um, she's back, okay? And Carrie said, Hi, Dave. Thank you for your message. It's lovely to hear from you again. And I'm so pleased that you know of the news. Now, in that message, she's probably gone, Oh, fuck, I've not told him. I should have kept this guy in the loop and let him know what was happening. Fuck, she didn't. It's okay. I found the news anyway. The two red panda twins born to Nima and Coda on the 22nd of June have just had their first full health check by our veterinary team and they both have a full clean bill of health. Mum Nima is doing very well and she's doing a great job caring for them both. They haven't got names yet, but now we do know that one's a boy and one's a girl. I'm sure it won't be long before they do. Keep an eye on our news pages and our website and social media pages. The pair are important additions to the breeding programme for the species and we're delighted here at Chester Zoo. Please find up-to-date photos and videos of the pair at this link. Thank you for your continued support of our conservation work. 
and I do hope I can welcome you to Chester Zoo soon. Now, that was that on the 2nd of September 2019, six days before I became father myself. And you know what? You think that's all fair. You know, you think there's not going to be any more. Fast forward until the 3rd of July this year and I reached out to Kerry again. I said, hi Kerry, I hope you're well. I'm just following up on my previous email from September 1st, 2019. What a whirlwind few years we've had, I'm sure you'll agree. I'm just getting in touch again to see how Nima Coda and the gang are doing. I don't even know the kids' names, which is terrible. Believe it or not, I'll be in Chester on my holidays in a couple of weeks and we'll finally get to visit the zoo. I was hoping that I would be able to meet Nima and the kids if possible. I would be willing to meet Coda too, but, and in brackets, as I'm sure you can imagine, I still feel slightly conflicted over my loyalty to June. Hopefully this will be possible. Many thanks, Dave. Now, is Kerry going to reply? No. Kerry's gone. Mike is now here. Hi Dave, thanks for contacting the zoo. Coda and Nima are well. The children have been taken away to another zoo. They're currently visible for guests so you can see them in their habitat. Hopefully on the day you'll visit you'll be able to see them. We look forward to welcoming you. No. Mike. Mike CZ. I was like, what a nerd. Mike C. Chester Zoo. Don't sign it like that, Mike. Come on. Get Kerry back. And we'll see what's going to happen. Now. I'm going to reply here to Mike. I'm going to say, Hi, Mike. <laughs> Hope you are well. I did get to Chester Zoo over the weekend there. But unfortunately, due to the bad weather, I didn't get to see the Red Panthers. I, or, sorry, I didn't get to see Nima or June. Could you tell me what zoo the kids are at? Because I'd like to meet them. No, even better. Could you tell me where the kids have moved through so I could potentially meet them? Meet them. Um, also... Has Kerry left Chester Zoo? Because I feel she would like to see the conclusion of the story. I feel she'd appreciate a conclusion to the saga. Cheers, Dave. Guys, there you go. Live email on the podcast sent to Chester Zoo. So yeah, I got there. The pandas were so far up the fucking tree. I was going to jump the fence and climb in, try and get them. Thought I'd probably get banned. Now, with any luck, they'll get back to me and they will fly me over and we'll get to meet the pandas properly. If not, I don't know what I'll do. I feel I'll be heartbroken. But who, sure. And he said, but who? But sure. Who cares? Guys. I'm going to do some listeners' questions, and I hope that's enough this week. Hope you can appreciate. I'm tired. My brain's not really firing. I have actually another episode to do. Cause I'm leaving the office soon, and my mind's elsewhere. So before you give any negative comments, this podcast being shaked this week. Hey, be kind. What about that? <sighs> right, Jane Riley said, "How sticky did your undercarriage get when you were away?" The answer, surprisingly, is not not that bad. I had a fairly, um, you know, down the undercarriage doesn't really get that wet. It's my head that sweats. My head gets sweaty. My back gets sweaty. But my uh, the sweat doesn't drop down my balls, as little Johnny said boys would say. Um, in spite of the fact that I've been to the window or the walls. But yeah, not, not too sweaty. Overall, my whole body was sweaty and I didn't like it. But it was definitely warm. 38 degrees in the United Kingdom is excessive. Speaking of which, we went to Windsor Castle as well, because obviously my wife loves castles. That was an impressive castle. 
Warwick Castle, not so much. The only thing I did enjoy about Warwick Castle, I, was, I read a story about a guy called not Gavis, Gaviscon because that's the anti that's the the anti gas things and that they stop you getting all gassy. Gaviscon tablets are like Rennies, but this guy called Guy Gaviston and there was a king, maybe Richard or some shit. I know, but his dad, Richard's dad, right? So here's the back. Here's a history lesson. Richard's dad was a big war guy. He was a big war king, went out, fought people, went to battles, whatever. He had a son, Other Richard. Now, whenever he died, Other Richard became king. The battle, the, the fighter Richard, he would have been turned in his grave. But this young kid, king, he didn't like to go to battle, he didn't like anything. He's like just hanging around with his mate called Gaveston. Him and Gaveston just looked like to walk around, holding hands around the palace, chatting about gossip and all. Which, to be fair, my kind of guy. The other knights and all didn't like that. They were like, this guy's too out of order here. We need to somehow get the fucking business back on track here. So they set up a wee kangaroo court, killed Galveston. King didn't like it. Had everyone else murdered. Great story. That happened at Warwick Castle. But generally speaking, Windsor Castle was better. Why does there need to be a castle nowadays? Probably tourism. But also, it's excessive though for the old queen. Respect. Um, but yeah, it didn't get that sweaty. And if it did, would you buy bottled undercarriage sweat because I'll sell that on Patreon now too along with my only fan stuff I'm doing um, Willie has said fuck Mary and kill Colin Shane and Karen. <sighs> that's a hard one you know what normally people do kill at the end to be like oh fuck I'm going to have to kill him because I picked the other I'll do kill first and I'll kill Karen first for one reason and one reason only and it's because I hate him. And no, I'm joking. The only reason I would kill Kieran first is because I've got dad code, you know. And as at the moment, Kieran may very well be a dad at some stage. At the moment, he isn't. So I would kill him first because I would feel bad on leaving Shane's son without a dad, especially now he's going to have another one as well. Um, so I wouldn't want him to have two wee kids with no daddy. And then Colin's got Eddie. We won't leave Eddie with a daddy. You know, so unfortunately for that reason, I would kill Kieran. I don't know. I I, I don't. I, I would. I, I don't think I would fuck Shane on the reason on the basis that he has just phoned me. Oh my god! What what are the chances? Hold on. Hey man, you're live in the podcast. Don't swear, but I'm literally just. I've just answered a question. Someone asked me who would I rather fuck marry or kill you, Colin or Shane, and I've just said I don't want to fuck you. So just as you ring me there, as if you're ringing to shout at me. Fuck you. Why would you not want to fuck me? <laughs> because Again? I feel like you would enjoy me picking you to fuck too much. That's my reason. <laughs> I feel you'd be like, oh, you want to fuck me and all. I think you would enjoy that too much. <laughs> so that's my, yeah, my reason. Would, yeah. Yeah, like whenever we're 80, I'd be bringing it up. I was like, you wanted to fuck me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, I would. so, yeah. So that's the, re- that's the reason why I'm not going to fuck you. Um, I'm going to marry, marry you instead. I've decided. Oh. I mean, yeah. we've discussed this before that, like, we love our wives, but would there be anything better than Davy and Shaney being married? Yeah, and I mean, a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't know, know how much that fun, fun would be. You know, we would just be there, and I can imagine us both just sitting, grumpy old man, at the front of an old folks' home, just bitching about people. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Our, I mean, the only, di- the only difference in that now is we're not old. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, the good news for you, though, on the bright side is that I'm wrapping this podcast up. I'm just doing the questions, so I'll phone you back in a couple of minutes once I've explained why I want to fuck Colin. <laughs> and then oh. we'll, uh, right, we'll go there. <laughs> All right. All but right, you couldn't you couldn't it. have timed that better. Right, speak to you in a bit. Bye. Bye. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the reason. He would take too much joy in me wanting to fuck him. I, or and so yeah I would I'd marry Shane and I'd fuck Colin because I don't know if any of you guys have seen this but somebody um, made a picture of all the Northern Irish comedians if they were women and Colin was very sexy like I mean oh, sexy so yeah kill Karen, marry Shane fuck Colin um, Dave McAllister has said why do people get absolutely pissed at stand-up gigs slash live podcasts and talk the whole way through? Had this happened a few times whenever I've been at gigs? 
um, when you've asked them to kindly shut up or had this happen a good few times when you asked them to kindly shut up to start don't care about those around them big love Dave yeah I don't understand why people do that you know I, for the life of me don't get why you would pay money to come to a show and wreck it for everyone else now the act it does annoy them yeah but the problem with it is when people get on like that they can't be dealt with so if they're if they're just heckling or being a bit of a dick you can only shoot them down when they realise they've been had if they're you go alright respect I'll keep my mouth shut but there are people who you just can't get through and they're the ones that ruin it see people that aren't really there for the show and just go to get pissed they fucking wreck it for everyone and I have a gigs like that you know I have a gigs like that um, that have just ruined it one gig in particular was the worst gig of my entire life was awful there was just a table of women just chatting the whole way through didn't even care that stand up was on they just were ch- chatting the whole way through and it was just awful ruined it for everyone else had people coming up being like listen sorry about this um, I'm like, listen, I'm sorry for you guys. You're the guys who come to pay here. And these fucking people just didn't shut up. It's happened in live podcasts as well. You know, it's just a shame. Here's the thing. See the hecklers? You aren't comedians. You just aren't funny. It's not your job. Our job. So maybe just shut up and just laugh and have a nice time. But yeah, people just can't control themselves, I think. It's half the battle thing, you know. So Naomi has said, pretty sure turning himself into a black alien is probably racist. Let's see. I mean, probably isn't. I, I think I've seen this guy before. Yeah, seen this dude before. Um, wow. Anthony Lafredo from France. Not the most French name, you know, but we'll go with it. I would have guessed he was a Mexican dude based on that name, which, hey, it's profiling. Racist. Uh, a tattoo addict who's transforming himself into a black alien now wants to amputate one of his legs. Frenchman Anthony Lafredo. Hey, in fact, he sounds like an Italian mafia man rather than a Mexican. Hey, Antonio Lafredo uh, has already had his nose, both ears and two fingers amputated. His upper lip has almost been completely removed, making it difficult for him to speak. Hey, he's also countless implants placed under his skin, which is almost completely tattooed black, as are his eyeballs. Now, believe it or not, this guy doesn't look sweet. And I would also say, hey, who's doing this to him? Unless he's doing that himself, that surely is a crime, no? To just mutilate somebody like this. His ears are for hearing, noses are for smelling, and lips are for tasting. You need them, don't have them removed. Noses are also to filter stuff from getting into your head and giving you an infection. Let me see. Yeah, have his lips removed, which make it difficult for him to speak. He's all, oh my God. The body modification addict has also his tongue split and a hole cut through the skin below his bottom lip. Speaking on the Club 113 podcast, Lafredo opened up about how he found it difficult to find work Duh! Due to his extreme appearance. Now, of course it is. Continue reading. When asked if he'd ever kept any of his amputated body parts, he said, my ears, my friends keep them. I mean, to be fair, the guy's fairly jacked. Um. And you, why do you, why would you cut your fingers off? Like, fingers are necessary. He revealed how he kept his discarded lips after several operations on his mouth. He posts an image of himself poking his forked tongue through the hole to his 1.2 million Instagram followers. And now the Frenchman has further raised eyebrows by claiming he wants to amputate one of his legs. In a recent interview in a podcast, he said he was considering chopping off one leg at the knee. It's something really hard because I have a healthy leg. The amputation is something big, Lafredo said. Now, looking at him before he had his body modifications, sexy guy. Like, I mean, check this dude out. I would say the guy's seriously unwell mentally. Um, unless he's done something, you know, that he needs to hide from. I don't know what's going on. In a previous post, he had hinted at splitting his penis in two prompting one person to reply I knew you were, you were stupid but that much so like cut your ears off cut your nose off cut your lips off tattoo your entire body black cut a couple of your fingers off just for the crack hey man don't make yourself have a double dick don't make yourself have a horned cock please that's too far you can touch anything you want not the cock Um. now this is interesting he's looking at integrating technology into his future plans do you like futuristic chips? I like everything surrounding this. It draws my attention. Technology is the future, he added. Wow. I mean, 
it's pr- pretty racist, but also fucking hell, that guy. Now, what I love about this, Jenna Hood has actually sent the same story in, but said, surely this dude would be a future entrant to the Champions League of Weird. If you're not on my Patreon, I did a, a series that was far too long and took far too much effort called the Champions League of Weird, where I just looked at loads of weird people from around the world, the world of celebrity or super weirdos. This guy didn't make the list because I thought he was too ill mentally. So, but yeah, Jenna, definitely an odd guy. Like, I don't know why you're cutting... I don't know what he's doing. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Anyway, next question. Emma Jane has said, What is your favourite thing about coming back from holiday? Um, This time was just the heat. Get away from the heat. Get back to normal temperature. Get back to Northern Ireland. Also, there was fucking loads of scumbags down on the beach in Crawfordsburn leaving their rubbish at their holes dirty bastards here's the thing see if you're going to go somewhere beautiful don't wreck it just because you live in a shithole yourself don't come down to a beautiful part of the world and wreck it because you're a tramp pick up your rubbish put your rubbish in the bin don't be a dirty bastard otherwise stop the trains from getting in the north down I'll build a wall I'll build a wall I'll build a wall and I'll make the people from Belfast build it they'll pay for it with their benefits fuck them don't hate when that happens see him actually as I hate it whenever like there's band parades on the 12th just end, end no and people just leave him in what's hard about throwing rubbish in the bins you're wrecking your own towns you're wrecking your own cities now yes I'm the king of North Down everyone knows it that's all well and good I love North Down I love Bangor I love that area I do also love Belfast and I just want to say that the last few times I've been in Belfast to do gigs or whatever it's been a tip so hey guys Look after your city. Stop being tramps. Will you? Why'd you ask me that, Emma Jean? You got me all cross. But yeah, coming back from holidays is to be nice and cool. I'm a bed. I always miss my own bed. Just, yeah, and, and rest. You know, that's just... Rest. Aaron wants to know if I'm a holiday city break guy or a beach holiday guy. I would say in an ideal world... I like both. I'm just a holiday. I'm a holiday guy. Wherever I go, this is the thing. Wherever I go on holiday, I'll make the most of it. If that's in the city, I'll do city things. If that's on a beach, I'll do beach things. Now, am I fantasizing about a beach holiday at the minute without my kids? Yes. So for the, at the minute, beach holiday is in the lead. But I do like city holidays, and I just like anywhere. I like I like any holiday. I like any activity. I love history. I love spending time with kids. I just wish they were a bit more respectable, and I wish they appreciated things a bit more, and I wish they slept a bit more, and I wish they'd stop screaming as much. Anyway, Robin, with the last question of the day, asks which school breeds the worst people: Campbell, Methody, Inst, or Sullivan? Well, not Sullivan, because I went there. Um, but out of those four, Campbell. Overall, Regent House. Guys, thank you very much for listening to this week's episode of the Sly Guy Podcast. It's been a struggle. I've had the higher day, holiday tiredness. That's a prime example. I've said enough, guys. Take care of yourselves. Godspeed. I'll see you next week. Bye. I'm the Sly Guy.